Cool. All right. <clears throat> Some documents are so important that we don't even record them. Yes, I said that correctly in case you went, what, what, what? Yes, some documents are so important, they don't need to be recorded. A good example would be your real estate taxes. Everybody has them, why record it? We don't need to record it over here, it's recorded in the assessor's office. So when they go down to the recorder's office to pull all the documents, they will stop at the assessor's office and pick up the taxes. Inheritance taxes, those don't get recorded. So there are some documents that by virtue of their very nature do not even get recorded because typically they are either uh, so important that we don't need a copy of them there, we've got it somewhere else. And in your book, uh, it talks about it. franchise taxes, inheritance taxes, things of that nature don't get recorded which should further tell you that recording is not a legality. Now, what we're trying to look for is this thing called a chain of title. Bob sold the property to Bill, sold the property to Sue, sold the property to me, and you are looking to buy my property. I put my property up for sale. The chain of title is this chain here of ownership. This shows the historical ownership of the property back virtually forever. <coughs> It's a property record of the ownership of the property. And it begins with the earliest and goes all the way to the end, all right? And hopefully what you've seen is a warranty deed sale all the way through. When I say that, remember, it means general warranty deed, which has the five protections. In this particular case, this is called an unbroken chain. That's literally what they want to see is an unbroken chain. An unbroken chain shows a constant conveyance from one party to the next party to the next party up until current time frame, which is me owning the property. Now, when you come to me, and you say, Raymond, I want to buy your house for sale. And, I, and you say, I want you to promise me you own it. I want you to promise me you're going to remove all of the liens. I want you to promise me there's nobody out there coming after me. And if you're wrong, I want you to promise me you'll help me. And I want you to make these forever. And I say, sure, trust me. Would you trust me? Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Right, because remember, we sell it an arm's length transaction. I don't know you, you don't know me. So I'm like, trust me. And you're like, uh, no. Okay, how about if I buy you an insurance policy that would allow me to make these five outlandish statements and if I'm wrong, or I've lied to you, this insurance policy will cover this. Now, would you believe me if I made these statements? The answer is thumbs up. Welcome to title insurance. This is what title insurance is. Title insurance is nothing more than an insurance policy that protects the conveyance of title. Remember, title, boop, from me to you. This is the policy that will protect what I say or what I claim in a form of an insurance policy. And prior to me doing this, I go to the insurance company and go, hey, I want to sell this. 
and I want to make these five outlandish statements, will you protect me or will you allow me to insure the property? And they will say, well, hold on. And they will do what's called a title search of that property address. They're on page 106. A title search is where they go back into the recorder's office and public records and they will search back to 40 years or to the root of the title. And the root is the word they use, meaning the very first one. I think your book says 60. Indiana searches back 40. And I guess their belief is if no one's made a claim in 40 years, they're probably not going to now. And what they want to see is exactly what I showed you. They would love to see this unbroken chain so that now if I make this statement to you and something happens like Sears comes knocking at your door and Lashana buys the house and goes, hey, Sears is knocking at my door. They said in 1982, you put a, they put a roof on this house. They want paid. You promised me further assurance, warranty forever, and it's not here. I said, okay, I, I promised you that. Wait a second, what year? 1982, I didn't own it. I bought it from Jamon. Hold on, so I go to Jamon, uh, in this case, let's say Sue. I go, hey, Sue, you sold me the house under a warranty deed. You promised me quiet enjoyment, further assurance, warranty forever. Sears is knocking at the door. She says, yep, yeah, I did. Wait a minute, what year? 1982, I didn't own it. She bought it from Bill. So you can see how this chain is effective in making sure that there is an insurance policy. Now, somewhere along that line, one of those people made a mistake, <clears throat> obviously. So one or somebody's insurance is going to be liable for this. So the reality is behind me, all they really care about, my insurance company, is there's another insurance company protecting them. And they did it because behind them, there was an insurance company protecting them. So the reality is, even though I'm promising this warranty forever, to you when you buy it, I actually, my insurance company is really only on the hook for the years I owned it. Because behind me, or behind them rather, or me, either way you wanna look at it, is Sue's insurance policy. And behind Sue is Bill's. So you can see how things start to stack up. And that's what we want to see is this unbroken chain. Now, there is a situation sometimes, easiest to do it this way. I think Bill sold it to Bob, sold it to Sue. Sue went into foreclosure and had the property taken by the bank. I bought the house at the sheriff's sale What kind of deed did I get if I bought it at the sheriff's sale? I got, go ahead. You have a special, right? Not special. special, actually one worse than that. Oh, is it? I is it a bargain and sale? Bargain and sale? Exactly, I got a bargain and sale deed. And a bargain and sale deed does not have these five warranties. It doesn't even have the two warranties that you mentioned in a special warranty deed. It is a bargain and sale, which has one implication, and the sheriff says, we're pretty sure we own it. So now I put it up for sale, and here you are. You come to me and go, hey, Raymond, promise me you own the property, promise me you uh, <clears throat> remove all the liens, further assurance, quiet enjoyment, warranty forever. I look at you and go, trust me. And you say, uh, no. So I say, okay, how about I buy an insurance policy? Would you trust me then? And you say, yes. So I go to my insurance company and I'm like, hey, I need to buy an insurance policy on the title 
so I can make these five statements and my insurance company is going to go no way in hell because behind me, there is no more insurance company. Now Sears comes knocking at your door. Let's say I did, just for sake. Sears comes knocking at your door. You come to me and go, Raymond, further assurance, quiet enjoyment, warranty forever. I say, yes, I did. My insurance company, there's no other insurance company behind them because I bought a bargain and sale, which does not carry the further assurance, quiet enjoyment, and warranty forever. My insurance company missed that. They are the ones on the hook. They would be the one paying Sears for that roof. So they are going to say no, because there is a broken chain of ownership and we could be liable. So we are in fact not going to ensure this title uh, work on the sale. So now I could tell you, Mr. Buyer, I will sell you the property, but it's going to be at a bargain and sale deed. I legally have that right. I do not have to transfer the warranty deed. That is my right. Remember, I told you the seller decides this. And you could buy that property at a bargain and sale. But remember, we said it was worth 150. Well, that's fully protected. At a bargain and sale, you're taking some risk. So you might say, okay, I'll buy that at a bargain and sale, but I'm only going to give you 90 or four or 110, whatever number you decide is worth the risk to you. So there's no law that says I have to sell by general warranty deed. It's just the highest protection, which would allow me to get the highest value. We could do a deal, bargain and sale, quick claim, special, we can't do special warranty because it's also an insurance policy. And they, the <clears throat> warranty deed, special warranty deed, are all what they call insured closings because there's an insurance company. Bargain and sale and the quit claim are a non-insured closing. There's no insurance policy to protect the buyer. So I could sell it to you, bargain and sale and quit claim. You're not gonna pay the full price. I want the full price. So I have to do something different. Yes, I can raise, <clears throat> so to speak, using this analogy, <clears throat> a bargain and sale deed. <clears throat> Hold on a second. <clears throat> seem to be dying here all of a sudden. I can raise that bargain and sale, excuse me, that was gross, up to the general warranty deed through a lawsuit called a suit to quiet title. And it is there in your book somewhere. Action to quiet title, one oh, page 106, a lawsuit. and. Shauna, this goes back to what we were just talking about yesterday about newspapers not being printed because there is a legal publication that has, is required in this where the attorney prints in the newspaper a in the legal notice section and we are getting to places now where some don't print as often as they used to. And there is some question in the legal world about the requirements of actual true, what they call service by publication like the nashville only prints one day a week mondays that may not fit in the legal definition because in a suit to quiet title you have to do it three times within two weeks no more than a week apart technically you can't even do that in the brown county in two weeks there's only two newspapers printed 